These days, knowing basic Excel won't set you apart. You have to keep up with the new features that enable you to improve productivity or you'll be left behind. In this video, I'm going to share 10 must-know modern Excel functions that simplify common tasks. These functions will not only make your life easier, they'll also make you the go-to expert in your office. My favorite is number four, but I'm curious about yours. As we dive into each one, don't forget to comment and let me know which function caught your eye the most. By the way, you can grab the file from the link in the video description and follow along. It also contains a cheat sheet, an example for each function, so you can use it for future reference. First, I want to clarify the difference between a function and a formula because these terms are often incorrectly used interchangeably. Excel formulas are the instructions you write to perform calculations or manipulate data. They start with an equal sign and can combine numbers, cell references, and operations like addition or subtraction, as well as functions. Functions, on the other hand, are built-in shortcuts for common calculations. Think of them as recipes which you just add ingredients to. For example, this is a formula that uses the COUNTIFS function. Okay, let's go. With the unique function, we can instantly clean our data sets, removing duplicates or extracting a list of distinct items for use in other Excel tools like data validation. For example, here I can extract a list of distinct items. Simply select the list close parentheses, and the formula spills the results. Alternatively, I can return items that are unique. That is, there's only one instance of them. Again, I'll reference the list of items, and the next argument allows me to specify if I want to compare across columns or down the rows. Now I want down the rows, so I'll choose a false here. And the last argument allows me to specify whether the formula returns the unique items or just a list of distinct items. By default, it will return a list of distinct items, which is false, but I want to see only items that are unique. So I'll go with true, close parentheses, and it returns other. And if we look at the data, you can see there is only one instance of other, making it unique in that list. You can also use the unique function to reference multiple columns and compare whole rows, which is handy for removing duplicates from your data. With the sort function, we can organize data in ascending or descending order, automatically transforming an unmanageable list into a neatly ordered data set in no time. For example, let's say we want to sort this table based on the items in ascending order. So the first document is the array, that's the whole table. The sort index is the column I want to sort by, which is the item column, and that's the second column in the array. Now, if I omit this, it will sort based on the first column. The sort order is ascending, and I could omit this argument because ascending is the default, but I'll put it in for completeness. And the sort direction is false to sort by row. I could also omit this because that's the default. Alternatively, I could enter true and sort by column. Let's go with false, close parentheses, and there's my table, now sorted based on the item column. Now sort is super handy for use with other functions. For example, we could use it with unique to sort a list of items we extract. So I'll start with sort, and what am I sorting? My unique list. So I'm going to wrap the unique function, close sort, and now my list of unique items is sorted in ascending order. Of course, you can use the other arguments in sort to change the sort order. I can skip the sort index, there's only one column, so it has to sort by that. And I could do minus one to sort it in descending order. As we continue through the examples in this video, give some thought to the other functions you could use sort with and try them yourself for homework. Better than concat, text join combines text from multiple cells or ranges. Plus, it can ignore blanks and include a delimiter, making data concatenation seamless. Here I have a table of names separated into first, middle, and last names, but I want to join them together into one column. And that's where text join is super handy. First, I need to specify the delimiter. I just want to separate them with a space. So I'll enter a space between two double quotes. Next, I can ignore empty cells with true so that I don't end up with double spaces where there's no middle name. So let's go with that. And then all I need to do is select the text, close parentheses on text join, and there's my names. And notice Janine Hadid doesn't have two spaces between her first and last names because I was able to specify true to ignore empty cells. 
Another cool way I like to use text join is to create a dynamic title. Here I have a pivot table with the sales for each category and the slicer allows me to select which categories I include. Now I'd like to bring the sales figure into a report on another sheet as a headline figure. To illustrate, I'm just going to do it here. We'll start by summing the sales and I'll allow for a couple of extra categories to be added in future. So there's my sales figure. Next, I need to create a text string that tells me what categories are included in the sales figure. And we can use text join to do that. So the delimiter is going to be a comma and a space. We're going to ignore empty cells. And the text is simply the list of categories, again, allowing for growth. Close parentheses on text join. Now I'm going to add some more text to the end, which is a space, a hyphen, and then sales, colon. That's just going to round off my text string. So now we can see that this value contains accessories, bikes, clothing, components, sales. If I select different items in the pivot table, the sum adjusts, as does my text string. So now I have a dynamic label based on the items I select in the slicer. Pretty cool. The filter function is my favorite. It allows you to filter data based on criteria you specify. The output can be displayed in the worksheet or fed into another function, and it's immensely versatile. For example, let's say I want to extract the sales department's data from this table. The first argument is the array which is the whole table. Next, I specify the rows I want to include with a logical test. In this case, I want to filter the rows where the department equals sales. And then if empty allows me to specify a value to return if there are no results based on my criteria. For example, I could return the text no records. Close parentheses on filter, and there's my data for the sales department. And you can also do things like link to data validation. So here I've got a data validation list and I can select a different department and you can see my filter formula is connected to it. So as I choose a different item, the filtered list updates accordingly. Plus you can include multiple filter criteria, return specific columns and rearrange the order of the columns and more, which I cover in this video. So bookmark that to check out next. The vStack function vertically stacks arrays or ranges of data, which is ideal for consolidating data without the need for complex formulas or Power Query. For example, here I've got two tables. Now they might be on separate sheets and I want to consolidate them into one table. I've got them together on one sheet so you can see it in action. So we want vStack. The first array is simply this table, including the headers. And the next array is this second table, close parentheses, and there's my data consolidated into one table. Job done. Now vStack is super handy to use with filter because it allows you to include a header row as part of the formula rather than having to hard key it. So in this case, I can grab the header from here. And then let's say I want to grab just the rows in this table where revenue is greater than 350. Well, we can use filter to do that. So we're filtering this table where revenue is greater than 350,000. Close filter, close vStack, and now I have a table and headings in one formula. vStack also has a sibling function called hStack for horizontal stacking. And I covered that and more cool ways to use vStack in this video, so bookmark that to check out later. We've just scratched the surface of what Excel functions can do. My advanced Excel formulas course is here to transform you into an Excel wizard offering in-depth insights into complex formulas and functions and data analysis techniques. Elevate your skills, streamline your workflow, and stand out as the go-to Excel expert. The course link is in the video description. XLOOKUP is the new improved VLOOKUP. It's the Swiss army knife of lookups, offering a versatile way to find and retrieve information across a table or range without the shortfalls of VLOOKUP or the complexities of index and match. Let's say I want to look up the product caps and return the sales. It's super easy with XLOOKUP. So the lookup value is caps. The lookup array is the product column and the return array is the sales, close parentheses. And there we go. Unlike VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP defaults to return an exact match. So there's no risk of formula errors. And I think you'll agree, it's easier to write. 
Of course, there's more arguments that allow you to handle errors and return a value if the match isn't found. For example, here, if not found, I could say not found or just leave it blank. You can also specify the match mode and the default is exact match, but you can also specify wildcard characters or the next smaller item or next larger item, which is handy for numeric matches. In the search mode, we can search first to last, which is the default, last to first, or use one of the binary searches if your data is sorted in ascending or descending order. So I'll leave you to explore those options for homework. The sequence function generates a list of sequential numbers, perfect for creating custom data series or time sequences with minimal effort. You might be thinking you'll never need this function, but it's more versatile than it first appears, so stay tuned. For example, let's say you're using Excel to create a list of items and you want to number them. It's super easy with sequence. Simply enter 10 in the rows argument and we get a list of numbers from 1 through 10. And if you insert a row, sequence doesn't break. Likewise, if you delete a row, it just adjusts accordingly. Let's say I want to return a list of five numbers. So again, with sequence, I want five rows and only one column. So we can enter a one here or we could skip it. One is the default. I want to start at five and increment by 10. And there we go. Or maybe you want a list of three rows by two columns. So again, sequence, three rows, two columns, starting at two. And this time we can increment by minus two, that is count backwards. But like most functions, when you team it up with other functions, you can make magic happen. Let's say I want a list of month end dates. I can use the end of month function and we'll start in 2025 January. And I want 12 month end dates for the year 2025. So here for the months argument, I can use the sequence function to return 12 values. I'm going to skip the column argument because it's just one column of values. I'm going to start at zero and that's going to give me the month end date from January. Close sequence, close end of month. And there's my list of month end dates for 2025. And if you wanted two years worth of dates, you could simply change the 12 to 24. And now I have two years worth of dates through to December 2026. Next time you need a list of numbers or dates, consider using sequence to speed up the process. The text split function divides text into separate columns based on a delimiter, which is way easier than the old left, mid, right function combination we used to wrangle. Here I've got a list of names and I want to split them into separate columns for first, middle and last name. We can use text split to do that. First argument is the text we want to split, then the column delimiter. In this case, it's a space, close parentheses, and there's my names split across first, middle and last. Just notice it wasn't able to correctly parse Janine Hadid because there's no middle name. So you do have to be careful that your data is consistent. Now there are some other arguments we can use with text split and it has some sibling functions, text before and text after, that are also super useful. So bookmark this video for more on these three functions. Easier than nested if formulas, the new ifs function is a streamlined alternative, allowing multiple conditions to be evaluated in a single elegant formula. For example, here I've got a list of items that are out on loan and I want to check their status, where loan items greater than 90 days old are overdue, Items equal to 90 days old are due and the items less than 90 days old are not due. With ifs, we can check if today's date minus the loan date is greater than 90, then we're going to return the text overdue. Alternatively, if today's date minus the loan date is equal to 90, then we'll return the text due. And lastly, everything else must be not due, and therefore we can skip the last logical test and just enter true here. And this will return the text not due. Close parentheses, and each loan item is now classified into overdue, not due, or due. Now one thing I should point out here is this is a structured reference rather than a cell reference, which would be D15. And that's because the data here is structured in an Excel table. We can see the table name is table three. So when working with data in tables, you get these nice structured references that reflect the column names, making it much easier to read and write the formulas. 
Now this last logical pair is not very intuitive, so let's just step through the formula. Ifs works in pairs of arguments, the first logical test, and then its value of true. If the first logical test is false, in this case it is, it moves on to the next one, and so on, until it gets to the first true logical test. Now, in theory, I could have put the logical test in here rather than skipping it. For example, let's copy that and paste it in. If today's date minus the loan date is less than 90, you can see it returns true, and it will therefore return the value not due. But there's no need to make Excel calculate this again. We know this must be true, so we can simply skip it. It just makes it slightly easier to write and for Excel to calculate. Next time you need to write a nested if formula, consider using ifs instead, so you don't have to deal with the nightmare of multiple sets of closing parentheses. With the let function, you can say goodbye to repeating complex calculations and make formulas much easier to write and read when you come back to them months down the track. In the previous example, we used this formula to classify loan items, and that formula uses the same calculation a couple of times. We've got today minus the loan date here, and then we have it again today minus the loan date. Now, a more efficient way to write this formula is with let. So let's just make the formula bar wider, and we'll insert let, and we're just going to Alt and Enter to make some space. Let allows us to declare variables and intermediate calculations inside the formula. So this is the calculation that is repeated. I'm just going to select it and copy it to my clipboard with Control C. And then we're going to name this variable age, comma, and then the variable calculation, I'll paste it in, that's it there, comma. And now I can replace this calculation in my formula with the variable I named. You can see it appears in the IntelliSense there, I can tab to insert it. Let's repeat it here as well. Looking at the formula now, it's not only more efficient for Excel to calculate because age is only being calculated once here, it's also easier to read. For example, we know that age is this calculation, and then ifs is simply, if age is greater than 90, then it's overdue. If age is equal to 90, it's due. Otherwise, everything else must be not due. So let's close parentheses on let and press enter. And you'll notice there's no change to the formula result. But if we look in the formula bar, we can see it's easier to read and it's more efficient for Excel to calculate. Next time you find yourself repeating calculations inside a formula, or you're writing a long complex formula, consider using let for efficiency and clarity. Keeping up to date with new functions like these is just one piece of the Excel productivity puzzle. In this next video, I cover 10 Excel tools designed to save you time on everyday tasks that you won't want to miss. I'll see you there.